How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Liberty Hour, streaming through Spreaker Studio and the A2 Jack YouTube channel. I'm back here with uh, Ricky, Casey, and uh, Michael. Sorry if you hear noise in the background. It is a fan because it is super hot in the room right now because, as I was mentioning, it's super hot this week. Um, so I was, I already got Ricky and Michael's response. Casey, what's your ideal weather? Like what's like an ideal place you like to go weather-wise? Like what's the perfect weather for you? Um, well, during the summertime when it's around this heat, um, we have a pool at our comp apartment complex. Usually I'll go with my brothers to the pool, but I kind of stopped doing that because I kind of realized how gross pools are and I don't really like to do it anymore. But, um, for the most part, I think I usually just stay inside with the fan open. I mean, not the fan open, the window open and the fan, but definitely my ideal place would be the beach, but, um, I haven't gone to the beach in a while, but... Which beach? Lake Tahoe or like Santa Cruz? Um, Santa Cruz. I used to go Cal. to Santa Cruz all the time, Cal. so, um, Cal. Lake Tahoe is nice. I like to go when it's like uh, you're the, out of time. the snowy vibe. You're out of time. Okay. My ideal weather is about 20 to 30 miles south of that in Monterey. That is ideal weather for me. I love Monterey. Ow. Perfect, like in the summertime, like 75 degree with a breeze. That's perfect. I, I, I'd rather it actually be cooler than warmer, personally. That's just me. Um, I, this is kind of a gross story. Not, not for me, but just in relation to what Casey was saying about pools, it's kind of a gross story. I mentioned to you guys earlier on the show about how packed the American River was and how packed uh, Folsom Lake was. Well, mm -hmm. this is a gross story that came out of the L not just the L.A. Times, but also the SAC B. After the big crowds on Memorial Day weekend, American River in SAC County tainted with E. coli and feces. Absolutely Ew. disgusting, and like like I said, dude, th this this is a this is gonna be a problem. Is not only do we have COVID, but we have a lot of other things that are gonna screw people up if we keep getting in these large groups. We saw tons of that crap in other states. Um, and this is kind of getting right back on the COVID thing, but we saw tons of big crowds in other states too, um, like Missouri, and tons of pool parties and stuff like that. Um, you know, it, it's like I said, the you, people got to be responsible. The one thing I will say, though, that I think is a good thing about COVID is it's forced a lot of people to kind of either do something they haven't done before or learn a new skill. And that's kind of my question for you guys. Anybody can start with this. What is like the best use that you guys have made of your time during COVID or what's a skill that you kind of learned while this was going on? Anybody can feel free to start. Oh, me? Okay. Um, I've gotten really good at puzzles. When it first started, my mom and I were doing puzzles every week, thousand-piece puzzles, and I found out that I'm actually pretty good at them, so I was happy about that. And I tried cooking a little bit, so I just tried to start little hobbies and just did little things like going on walks, um, cooking. I read uh, Harry Potter books for the first uh, couple weeks, and yeah, it was, I was just chilling. Boy, silly grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you must have a lot of, you must have a lot of patience to do a thousand piece puzzle <laughs> yeah i'm pretty competitive with myself so i'll be like oh i'm gonna get this puzzle done in like an hour and a half and i'll like try to do a thousand piece puzzle in an hour and a half so i make it fun by challenging myself spoiler alert she didn't get it done in an hour and a half yeah i would text michael and be like okay i'm gonna get this done in an hour and a half i'll text him like three hours later i'm like i just finished the puzzle <laughs> anyways i i was when it first started i was busy with the invention mm -hmm. right and now I'm busy with moving out. So I've been busy, and I'm back to work now. So I haven't really learned anything new, but, you know, I've been busy. Mm -hmm. uh, Ricky, what about you? Yeah, I'm like, I haven't been super productive, to be honest. I'm not one of those people that's been going out to do a bunch of stuff. But, like, over time, I guess throughout this whole thing, I've been working more mechanic-wise, like on Quan's car, my car, my girlfriend's car. So I've been figuring how to do more stuff out with their cars. Well, and, and you whatnot. had school, too. Well, yeah, that, but like that's what I'm saying. Most of my time right now has been able to catch up with family and friends and building a canopy with chowder for his car and stuff like that. So it's been cool. I mean, I've been just doing a bunch of landscaping and maintenance stuff. That's it. But it's I just like the it. same old stuff. Okay. Yeah. I I've oh, you I feel like I've I've done a lot of different yeah, things. Yeah, my boy's I, been doing a lot I of this. I started stuff. reading a new book. I just purchased two books, so I'm about a third of the way through one that I just bought. It's about Edward Stone. It's a really good book so far. Um, I've been watching a ton of movies and TV shows. I'm currently on 
season five, episode two of The Office. I got two and a half more seasons to go. Um, I'm so I'm doing a lot of that. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh, gee. Oh, that's right. I've been playing a crap ton of disc golf. So ever since, um, uh, the last podcast, I've really got into it. I, um, watched a lot of YouTube videos and got into it of a couple of people specifically that I watch. And so I went out, I've, I've gone out and played probably about a dozen times or so, um, I actually just got back from a vacation in Bandon last week and had a great time there. Weather was perfect, and then I got to come home to the heat. Um, but they had a really nice disc golf course up there, and I actually have gone playing with the, you, you, both of you guys once, and I've been playing with Michael a few times. And, I'm sorry uh, about your disc. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. If anybody's looking, <laughs> I've only ever gone once. That's you're why. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have only one time because he but, lost his disc. But no, I, I, Michael, I, I, I definitely see you getting better in certain respects out there, and I, I'm enjoying it. Does it make it, you feel fun. better? I didn't tell you guys, but that day when I was trying to get it, my foot got drenched real bad. Michael saw and it took me three washes. Oh, three, like shit. three shoe washes to get that set and Damn. mud out. <laughs> Dude, I, you know the effort I was, was there. Dude, I, you know I, I made an about? effort. I just, I just lost it. You know what I was thinking about? Because not only is that one, you know, somewhere in Narnia, but there's also two other ones that I lost last time I went out. And with how dry it's been this week, because there's been no rain, it's been super hot. Who knows? It might have drawn up, dried up. Maybe I could go get them now. <laughs> you lost them in the water hazard too. Uh, one of them, I threw a shit roller that went into the weeds in the water and I couldn't find it. And then the other one, uh, I guess it, I have no idea where it went, but probably it must have fucked off into Narnia. Who knows? But, uh, but no, I mean, it's been fun. I've been enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, it is, it does cost a little bit. So if you're interested in actually getting into it, it costs probably anywhere between really 12 to $15 a disc, but it's pretty fun. I've been enjoying that. And, uh, it's been nice to be able to go out and play a little bit with you, Michael. And, uh, you know, uh, so it's, it's been, it's been fun. And, uh, so I've been able to, you know, make some good use out of my time, but honestly, you know, I've got enough stuff to keep myself busy for another month. If I weren't to go back to work, I know it's likely I'm going to be going back soon. Um, but you know, and, and that's another thing about this whole coronavirus is with everybody who's going back to work right now. And, and I know obviously Michael, you're back to work. There's been a lot of warnings from officials that we're going to see arguably even a worse second wave when it comes to, um, the late fall when uh, flu season yes, starts back up again. And so I just want to get your thoughts on this. Do you see uh, a scenario occurring where things will have to close down again because of it possibly getting worse in the future? Before a vaccine? That, that's an interesting question. That's a really good question because I have no idea. I feel like the businesses are really going to feel the pressure. I don't know how big the government the government support is will be in the second wave because this is all just for before summer, all the support that the government is giving. So when it comes to the second wave, it depends on the government support. Right. So if the government is like, hey, I'm not going to support you this time, then I'm pretty sure they're going to remain open and, and stick to these guidelines. Because the half of the closing was we, we didn't know what to do with the businesses and stuff like that. Now we know what to do for the most part. So maybe they might keep it open. Maybe they close. I have no idea. That's a really good question. I think it also depends on people's responsibility and the actions they take during this as well. That's going to be something that comes down to with these places that reopen. And um, that's just not something to rely on. <laughs> yeah, exactly, as we've seen. But, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a matter of waiting. We'll just have to see, you know, what happens with it. But uh, I guess uh, the same question I just asked you, I guess I'll ask Casey. Uh, do you think that it, this could get worse to a point where we might have to close again? Um, what's your kind of thoughts of where we go from here on this? I honestly have no clue either. I was talking to Aaliyah the other day, though, and she was telling me how there was a place in China that after they had lockdown, they got in lockdown again like a month later. And I don't know, I could, if they're in lockdown again, I could potentially see it happening to us because I feel like um, the Chinese are more uh, proactive and are definitely stricter than we are with like kind of those guidelines. So I feel like if they are going to go back in lockdown, I definitely feel like it can be a possibility for us because I feel like they're very cleanly. Um, so I know that the Chinese and Japanese are very cleanly. So if they're back in lockdown or if any part of their countries are in lockdown, I think it's potential for us to go back to. Well, I will say one place over there that has been doing a very good job um, at containing it and has actually been able to 
uh, reopen some some sports because I've actually been able to watch a little bit is um, uh, South Korea. Um, they've managed to contain it very well, and they actually their baseball league in South Korea is actually back up and running. They're actually able to um, start playing games again that's on like ESPN and stuff like that. So uh, they've been handling it very well. Uh, Taiwan's another country has actually been uh, containing it very well as well. Um, but Ricky, I guess I'll go ahead and a- ask you the same question as well. Um, I was just talking to Michael and Casey about um, – if you know we're starting to see a lot of things reopen, do you think that there's there's a lot of warnings that in the late fall, early winter, when flu season starts back up, that we could see this pop again? You know, have a lot more cases. Could you see a scenario happening where they we would have to close back down a lot of stuff because of it getting worse before we get a vaccine? Yeah, dude. I don't know. I mean, like the <laughs> simplest, like analogy i can use is like when you're trying to teach a dog i'm not saying anybody's a dog okay like it's just saying like when you try to teach a dog like it takes them a while to learn like they'll learn the first time something's bad and then they'll keep doing it and then they'll learn and then they'll keep doing it until like they start becoming more obedient and they're more trained to it so i feel like this whole thing because it's new and we're like super worried in the beginning now that we're like being a little bit more lenient i feel like it's going to catch us off guard and we're going to need to reclose some places up and we're going to need to start over and they'll be like oh man here we go around too i i like we messed up the first time let's Let's do it better the second time, and then boom, they're going to start reopening, and then boom, people are going to slowly start just going back to the old ways, and then boom, we're going to have to start reclosing, especially during, like you said, the winter and like when flu season comes around. I do think, like, it's weird right now. I have the mindset that this is just going, this is just how it's going to be for a while, like for at least for like I don't want to jinx anything, but for the next couple of years, I feel like a lot of places are going to start being super precautious. If this, if there's no vaccine yet, like assuming there hasn't been a vaccine, I feel like everybody's going to be like, all right, guys, it's winter. So start stocking up ahead of time. Hey, November, December, come around. Like you guys are ready. <laughs> Just get your toilet paper ready. Do this. Like it's, it's that time of the year again. Yeah. This is the new, this is the new season. This is the new holiday. It's COVID season, boy. <laughs> Corona season. Well, you on. talk about a complete 180. I remember when we did our last show when this thing was just I, starting. I was super optimistic you thought it'd be two weeks. Show. You thought I, it'd be I like two weeks. Now it's going two right. years. <laughs> <laughs> I Holy had shit. no idea that this virus is going to be this intense or oh, that yeah. it was going to hit like a storm this bad. I thought there, we could just. There's like, a difference, open. though. There's a difference because mm-hmm. after, uh, well, in the first wave, right, we didn't know that it was coming. Then we figured out that, hey, it already affected everyone. We didn't know what to do, and now so we know what to do. So when the second wave hits, I'm curious what will happen because we're all we will we will all continue to do this this six feet apart thing, wash our hands more often for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. And if we continue to do that, I'm wondering how big of an effect that would actually have because I kid you not, I haven't got I usually get sick a lot around this time of year. I haven't gotten sick once, and that's due, I think, in part to just washing my hands whenever I'm having contact with the outside world as soon as I get back with anything. So it's I'm curious as to how that will affect the actual second wave, right? That was kind of another question I had. Uh, I wanted to ask you when it came to Ross. Is I know obviously you guys have masks and uh, gloves and stuff like that, but. Uh, how often do they have, or, or how often are you, or how often do they have you guys like wash your hands during a normal shift? I know you work like five hour shifts. Do like they have you guys wash your hands enough? Yeah. Do you think, or? Uh, I don't know about enough because you can really never wash your hands enough. But there is a point where if you wash them too much, they'll get dry as right. hell. So are you are you guys using gloves or no? Well, we only use gloves on returns so far. And that's because we have to change them out every time we use them. So I think it's too costly to do that with every single customer. Mm-hmm. And instead, we kind of just use hand sanitizer on the things. And if we handle cash, hand sanitizer. Because to wash our hands, we have to go all the way to the back to the break room. And that's in the back of the store. But we do wash our hands before work, during uh, our break, before we get back on to work after the break and before we leave for work. So four times usually. Yes, Ricky. Yes. So um, I have a question about Ross. I don't know if you know this, but like when people return clothes, assuming they've tried them on, do you guys just put them back on the racks after a while or do you guys like let them pile up and wash them? I don't know if Ross even has a washer. We don't, we don't wash them. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I wonder if that's something Ross is going to take into consideration. We don't let people try on clothes. Here's what we do with the returns is that we – pile them up 
with mm-hmm. uh, cards. And we have like a three day waiting period for each time. I'm going to have to cut you off. We'll be right back with part five of the Liberty Hour. <laughs>